There could be snakes anywhere in here. I hope we find some gold. Jeremy, where are you? Brian! There's a snake. Coming! Can you start to move? Don't move yourself. He's moving, he's moving. You're within striking range. Watch it. Watch it. Go, 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 go. go. Hidden somewhere along the southeastern coast of Brazil lies hundreds of millions of dollars worth of lost Incan gold. For 500 years, many have searched, fought, and died for this elusive bounty. But all have failed to hold on to it. Now, an elite team of treasure hunters is following a radical new theory that is leading them to the one place no one dares to go. Queimada Grande, Snake Island. You guys have snakes on your you left. You have major snakes right there on your left. Two of them like in line over here. The Golden Lancehead Viper, this thing bites you. There's a lot of ways to die. It's probably one of the worst. Treasure hunting in itself is nearly impossible. Quark! What? Get over here. It's markings for a map or something. Now add the dangers we're facing on the island and in the waters. This area is Brazil's Bermuda Triangle. We're in a place where modern day pirates exist. And word has gotten around that we're here looking for treasure. I can see guns. Quark! Oh my what? god, they got guns. I'm going. Go, 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 The big question is, can we find this treasure before the pirates, bad weather, or snakes get us first? Stand by. Watch it, watch it. Hey, you guys! We got something in here. What do you got? Look, look. What is it? What am I looking at? Oh, my god. In the waters off the coast of Brazil, a team of treasure hunters is traveling to one of the most dangerous islands in the world, Snake Island. I think we're going to be going basically where nobody's gone before. Somebody actually made a list of the 10 worst places to visit in the world. And this is it? This is, yeah, this is number one. Nobody has ever landed and searched for the treasure on this island. So like, why don't you give us an idea about what we're really going to be dealing with when we get on that island? Snake Island has the highest density of venomous snakes anywhere in the world. If you average the population over the entire island, you'd end up at one snake per square meter. But of course, there may be areas we encounter where there may be 20, 30 snakes in a very small vicinity. We want to so behave in a non-threatening way. Slow, smooth motion. What, what do we do if we do get bit? What's the process? Number one thing is keep the person calm and keep them immobile. If you get bit, you could very realistically end up losing a hand or an entire arm, but death will be from bleeding issues. I've had bites like this, and I started bleeding out of my nose first, and then I started bleeding out of my eyes. It was like stigmata. It was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> you and I definitely have a different version of what cool is. Yeah, it's not cool. <laughs> you hope this treasure is worth risking our lives for. Every kid hears these stories about treasure and pirates and going off on adventures around the world and dreams of finding lost gold. But this area is littered with sunken ships that were marauded by pirates for centuries. And as a result, there's treasure hidden up and down this coast. But expedition leader Cork Graham and the team have their sights set on one priceless and legendary bounty the treasure of the Trinity. In the year 1524, Portuguese conquistador Alexo Garcia leads an expedition through the uncharted jungles of Brazil in a quest for Incan gold. Allied with thousands of warriors from the Guarani people, 
they attack and pillage Incan settlements as they march inland. Garcia reportedly amasses a vast fortune before he is finally driven back by the great Incan king, Huayna Capac, and his army. But then greed takes hold of Garcia's allies, and the Guarani warriors attack and kill Garcia and his men, claiming the treasure for themselves. The Incan gold reportedly makes its way to the coast. But then, legend has it, the locals fearing attacks on their own villages hide the fortune in the most daunting and secure place they know of, Snake Island. There she is. Snake Island is isolated, it's covered in deadly snakes. I mean, what better place to hide treasure? We good, we are good here. Let uh, me pull it up to the side, Jeremy. That'll work. Throw me the black line. But before the team risks their lives stepping onto this snake-infested island, they want evidence the treasure could be hidden there. The only way it could have been transported to Snake Island is by ship. So the team is searching for signs of nautical activity from the late 1500s, the time when the treasure disappeared. Grab the transducer. Got it. Radio? Got it. Snake Island is so dangerous, it'd be totally irresponsible to launch a major expedition after treasure on that island just based on theory alone. We're just doing a dry run. Go ahead. We need solid evidence of something man-made along the ocean floor. That could be debris from a ship from that time period, or it could actually be the full shipwreck itself. Snake Island is very remote, less than half a square mile in size. And due to its huge snake population, completely uninhabitable. If Cork's team finds remnants of a vessel from the late 1500s along its coast, it could indicate that people were on or near the island over 400 years ago. And the most plausible reason for people to be nearby would be to hide something of considerable value. What we're looking for right now is a footprint of the treasure, not the treasure itself. We could find just artifacts, we could find parts of ships. We could even find a ship with its full cargo in there of amazing value. You just never know. Cork assembled a team of professionals to take on this dangerous and complex hunt. Venomous snake expert, Brian Fry. Here, yeah, let me just throw myself down to you. And anthropologist and dive expert, Megan Haney Greer. I a little more weight for my weight belt, and I'm yeah. gonna get my gear set up. Ship's engineer, Jeremy Whalen, uses sonar technology to scan the bottom of the ocean. You guys seen anything? with a side scan sonar. I mean, it looks down to a 1,000 feet below us. And uh, not only does it give an image of the bottom, it's also GPS marked, so we know exactly where it's at. Just taking a minute to set up. Captain Keith Plaskett and Cork monitor the transmitted image on the boat. We can see rocks, and you can see the ripples from the sand. The problem is, every day that we are looking for evidence is costing me money because I've got my own money in here. Plus, we've only got a two-month window to execute this operation and find that treasure. After that, the weather will change, storms will come in, and they'll prevent us from doing any type of landing whatsoever on Snake Island. We're in a remote, inhospitable area. But, you know, for me, this is as close to a religious experience as I'm ever going to come. This is my mecca. Yeah. This is why I'm here. This is my golden treasure. Let me know if you see anything. I'll be taking a nap back here. This sonar search is painstaking. It really grinds on my patience, but we have to do it. I mean, there, there's no way we're getting on that damn island without some evidence of 16th century shipping activity in these waters. Seeing anything? This looks like school of fish on this side. We've been searching for a couple days. 
We haven't found anything yet, but this is a very difficult test. I mean, it's as hard as trying to find a needle in a thorny, ocean-sized haystack. A trained journalist, history expert, and combat photographer in Central America, Cork has three decades of treasure hunting experience that began when he was 18. I went after Captain Kidd's treasure on an island off the west coast of Vietnam. It was an illegal covert operation. We got caught. When I paid the price, I ended up spending 11 months in a Vietnamese prison. It was one of the darkest moments of my life. I was held for 11 months, and seven of those I was in solitary confinement. Boy, when you've seen a foreign prison and you're a foreigner in a foreign prison, I mean, it's a world that you don't want to go into. But it's a totally different ball game today. Modern day treasure hunting isn't what you'd imagine it to be. It's a cutthroat business. It's not shoveling dirt, digging holes. It's the art of gathering intel, gathering information. And the ones who win are the ones who get the best information. Ground level intel is what led Cork to these specific waters. A meeting with a local fisherman pinpointed a potential shipwreck site just off Snake Island. I'm hoping that local bit of recon is going to pay off because I'm banking on the idea that it'll cut down on our search time. But today's technology, you save so much time because the old archaic ways of doing things is taking, taking two boats and running a long chain between the two boats and dragging it on the bottom until it hooks something. That's time we don't have. We like this because it's low profile. It's like we're just cruising around out here with a little dinghy behind the boat. Keeping a low profile is critical to the team. Modern day pirates frequently terrorize ships passing through this region. I've encountered a lot of pirates out there. If they think there's any kind of chance that, they, that you have anything on board like treasure, they won't hesitate to come on board and kill you. These waters are not safe at all. I'm readjusting the side scan a little bit. We're back in business. I think you're checking for Ken too. Yep. yep. Uh, what's up, Cap? There's something coming up. Look at that. Go tell him. Start. Start. What does it look like? It's got structure to it. What are you guys saying? Maybe it's a pile of bricks. I don't know. It's like a long pipe or something. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. Oh, my god. That's man-made. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. How big is that, do you think? It looks to be around 10 feet or so. This is huge. Wow. Yeah, I think we got something here, man. After days of a painstaking search, the crew of the Alpha Crucis may have what they're looking for. Who knows what it could be? It could be a ballast pile. It could be any type of formation that's not normal to that area. We don't know until we go down and check it out. Totally blown away right now. We got a good image on there. Good days with the side scan sonar, let me tell you. <laughs> if we have found a man-made object in these waters in the time period that we're looking for of late 1500s, early 1600s, that means we'll be able to take the next step which is to land on Snake Island. Having honed in on a possible shipwreck, the team heads back to their base on nearby Ihabella Island to gear up to prepare for a full-scale underwater search. Safety is paramount when you're underwater and breathing compressed air. That's a whole nother element of danger. You don't want tainted air. That can be deadly. I feel like my experience dealing with different safety issues out on the water will be a huge asset to this team. 
I'm an anthropologist and a biologist. I'm also a free diver at heart. My claim to fame is in 1996, I established the US free diving record for men and women. And that was 155 feet in the constant weight category. My primary role on this team is I was brought in for my expertise of working underwater and also to assess artifacts that will give a little more weight to Cork's theory. Just touching base from my home outside of Boulder, Colorado. I've got the Rocky Mountains behind me over here and a big adventure ahead of me. It's hard to be away from my family. Hi, Mommy. <laughs> bye bye, Shazai. But what it really boils down to is to chase after your dreams and go after that adventure, especially if it's challenging. The thing that I gravitate towards is the historical context. So I'm really looking forward to getting back in the waters around Brazil. It's an area that's so rich in culture and maritime history, which is of great interest to me. I'm pretty excited to go on Snake Island and see these legendary pit vipers that are guarding the lost treasures. This is going to be an adventure of a lifetime. I've got everything on my checklist. I think we're ready to go. But on the other side of Ihabella, Captain Keith and Jeremy are far from ready, struggling on the most critical tool for the team's upcoming wreck site investigation. Basically, it is a dredge pump for collecting artifacts. It lifts sand and anything off the bottom like a big vacuum. So it's basically an ocean vacuum cleaner. I don't know if you can zoom in on this. Jeremy and Keith's dredge will be made up of a gas-powered pump attached to a lift hose that extends to the sea floor. The pump will create a powerful vacuum force, and the custom-built nozzle at the other end of the hose will lift sand, rocks, and any artifacts up to the boat. This is gonna be the nozzle. It's the end piece for the dredge. The fact that we're here in Brazil, it's difficult to get the parts we actually need. They don't sell these in the hardware store. <laughs> you gotta make your own. Here you go, Cappy. One schnozzle. Looks good, man. Trying to work as fast as possible because we have a lot to finish. Go, Court. How much longer do you think? Um, I've got to finish this screen here. We got to finish the, the holder for the screens. I hate to kind of like give you a push, but we kind of got to get this done as soon as yesterday, you know. We'll be talking to you guys later. Okay. Thanks. See you in a little bit. Cork has been on our case for us spending too much time and money on this uh, on this system, this dredge system. So the damn thing better work. Ready to go. What we're doing here today is we're testing out the dredge system we've built. He's been working on this for days and days and days. Hopefully it works. Otherwise, we're screwed. I'll only say it was our design after it works. I just have nightmares about this. Captain Keith swims away from the shore with a dredge hose before submerging it, so that a strong, steady flow of water emerges from the other side as the pump turns on. It's a moment of truth. We should be seeing water pump out. It's doing nothing. It's not working, man. We're wasting our time. This is pretty typical when you make a new design. I think the design's fine. I just think we need a bigger pump. Well, what's your problem with putting it on the other end, man? Even if you put that on the other end, Gabby. Jeremy, I'm telling you, that's what I've been doing for years, man. Yeah, you've never had one of these, Gabby. The way we had it originally hooked up, Jeremy had the dredge pipe within uh, two meters from where we had the screens. And so I wanted to move it further out, further away to where the suction end is to see if we had enough pressure. That's what I've always done. We tried this idea, we tried mine. Let's try your idea. Jeremy, obviously you have a lot of mechanical skills, but uh, I have done this for many, many years. My opinion should mean something. Gabby's configuration, it's not gonna create enough vacuum in here. So I think it's gonna be the same problem. My opinion is we need a high pressure, high volume pump. Anyway. All right, you're all set up now. Go ahead. It 
It's not doing anything it's supposed to be doing. We gotta get another pump. There's no if, ends, and buts about it. Bigger, high pressure pump. It's kind of disheartening that the weak link right here is this pump. My shower in the hotel's got more uh, pressure. So it's a major drawback right now. Back to the drawing board. The original theory was that this treasure, it was on the island of Trindade, which in Portuguese means Trinity. And that's the reason it's called the treasure of the Trinity. Now, I've told you that my, I've got my theory about why the treasure is specifically on Queimaja Grande. It's the ultimate hiding place. It's remote, it's hard to get onto, and it has the most terrifying deterrent. Yeah. It has the largest population of venomous snakes. Just imagine a snake every square meter on this island. The golden lance-headed viper is a venomous landmine. It's not going to pursue you, but if you step on it, it's going to explode. Makes sense. So I'll go first everywhere we go, so it's sort of a venomous equivalent of the Hurt Locker. <laughs> <laughs> to protect the team while exploring the island, Cork brought on herpetologist Dr. Brian Fry, an associate professor at the University of Queensland, who has 25 years of experience with dangerous reptiles and the battle scars to prove it. I live in Australia, in an area called Mount Glorious. Working with toxic animals is literally all I've ever wanted to do. I know firsthand just how dangerous snakes are. This type of snake, it's a horned sea snake. A bite from one of these took me nine months to recover from. I've had 27 snake bites. I've had stingray envenomations, had a life-threatening scorpion envenomation. I've been hit by just about everything out there. Just in case local hospitals don't have any antivenom, I'm going to bring this. You guys be good, take care of mommy. It's been a long-term goal of mine is to go to an island like this and actually get up close and touch and handle these snakes and study them. For me, the true treasure is the golden lancet vipers. You know, that's what I'm in it for. I'm here for the snakes. Expedition well, the best way to think of this particular snake is that it's basically a super predator. There's a theory in evolution that you can have an animal that comes through that's so successful that it'll wipe out its prey. The only thing that lives on this island is the golden lance-headed viper because it's eaten everything else that's on there. And we're now the only food source available to it are the migratory birds. Now that yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they say they're predatory type uh, snakes, does that mean that we we are the uh, they would want to eat us too? I mean, no snake would attack a human out of predation. Sound like you're pretty hungry to me. <laughs> if we don't act like a predator, we're fine. They will only defend themselves. From a venom perspective, it's a particularly nasty snake. It's an incredibly destructive venom, both on your blood and also on your local tissue. So if somebody gets bit, time is tissue. So we want to be absolutely sure what we're going after because of the danger there'll be to all of us in terms of landing on that island. For me, the most concrete piece of evidence that the treasure is on this island is this old map that pinpoints the hiding place. The map first mysteriously surfaced in India in 1852 and is believed to show the hiding place of the treasure of the Trinity. It was later published in a Brazilian paper in 1939 and launched a century-long treasure hunt. Many were convinced it depicted the nearby island of Ihabela, but Cork discovered something astonishing. Using the latest satellite imaging technology that wasn't available to treasure hunters even a few years ago, Cork compared the map found in India with every single island along the Brazilian coast until he finally found a match. When you take the map and you put it over Snake Island or Camada Grande, the topography and the outline is almost an exact copy. There is no doubt in my mind the treasure of the Trinity is buried here on Snake Island. If we can get more solid artifacts from a dive in this area, 
to give you guys the confidence to go to that next step, which is to get on to Camada Grande, Snake Island. Cork's theory at this moment is just a theory. It at least warrants some more investigation. I'm not going to just jump into a boat and run over to the Snake Island and thrash around on, on a whim. You know, we need to get more evidence. I mean, this is dangerous. It's a dangerous operation. When these snakes bite you, you could die. This is the most difficult and most dangerous treasure hunting expedition that any of us has ever been on. It'd be irresponsible of me to ask my team to go with me onto that island, Snake Island, without doing proper due diligence beforehand. There are risks, not just poisonous snakes. There is still piracy that's occurring out here. And we could have other treasure hunters coming after us. We've tried to keep it really quiet on this island, but you never know. The jungle telegraph here is very strong. There are competitors out there, and they're all looking for the same treasure we're looking for. And trust me, they're not going to follow the rules. We're trying to make this legal and convince the Brazilian government that we're very respectful of the environmental situation and the ecological situation. So our fixer, Jeff, he's going to get all the forms, all the permits we need. He's been very phenomenal in terms of getting what we need on the island. Any questions you got, he's got to talk to. Yeah, so anything you guys need, you know? Gonna fix for you guys. When Cork told me they want to go to Snake Island, I said, man, you're crazy. Here, the government people think if a treasure hunter gonna be here, they can just destroy the wildlife, they kill everything. So the government gonna be on top of you to know what you're doing. If you don't have permits, we cannot do nothing. I know I can make much easier for Cork and all the team. That's for sure. If you go there, probably they would say, no, we cannot do that. I, with personal friends, can use my knowledge to get things faster. I'm around since I'm a kid, so they cannot <laughs> me. We're good. Fearing that other treasure hunters may be close on their heels, Cork's team gets ready to depart for the wreck site, along with the most crucial piece of equipment for their underwater search. They got the pump. A custom-made dredge system that can extract over 100 pounds of debris per minute from the ocean floor, which is 10 times faster than one diver searching by hand. Now that's a pump. Now you're talking. OK, you got it? I'm sorry. I got it. Here, man. Test her out. See how it's gonna go. Something's wrong. Well, it's incomplete combustion. It's acting like it's not getting the fuel for the injector. Yeah. We need some uh, 15 oil diesel. Engine, engine, T40. We also have a full start. Holy cow, man. Ugh. It's heavy, man. They yeah, never, like, full started a diesel engine. No way. So I got a jumper. Jumpers. Here in Brazil, it's all the little things. We're having to compromise with our materials and things like that because we're having to find stuff here that's almost impossible to find. What's the status? I don't know. It makes it really hard. Even the delay of just one day could be catastrophic for us. I'm totally convinced there are competitors that are here trying to find out what we're up to. And I can't risk them beating us to the island while we're sitting here out on the pier. We only got about 35 minutes before the sun goes down. Uh, I want to take it apart and look on the inside. Oh, bloody hell. Today's the day, you guys. I mean, we got to get this thing going. We got to go look, today. Corey, look, Corey, if you had made a kit and had it sent down instead of freaking buying it, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. 
If this boat doesn't leave this morning, I'm just flushing more money down the drain. At some point, this thing is just not going to be worth the hassle. Got it going. I'm excited. I want to just get out there and get going on this. Get out of here. Come on, go, go, go. Where's the anchor, Cap? With the dredge fixed and the weather looking good, Cork's team is finally set to depart. Full power, full power to investigate the wreck site at the treacherous shores of Snake Island. This treasure has been missing for more than 400 years. It has changed hands so many times. Nobody's been able to hold on to it. But this expedition is going to be a totally different story. We're going to find the evidence we need to get on to Snake Island and find that treasure. After clearing unexpected hurdles, Cork's team finally returns to the treacherous shores of Snake Island, where their sonar search had revealed signs of a shipwreck. Everybody feel okay to dive today? Yep. Yes. Okay. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be good. Megan and Brian are ready to search for remnants of a centuries-old ship. Could be a lot of interesting stuff down there. If successful, the others will follow using metal detectors and the dredge pump. The weather conditions are calm right now, but if the currents pick up and all of a sudden you're going to sea, just stay on the surface, try to be calm, and uh, we'll send a, uh, we got a, a chase boat we can send out to get to you. Was the viz yesterday? Uh, we had about uh, five meters of viz. Okay. Yeah. So. But it deteriorated. So be aware of that. The risks of diving in these waters are really rocky terrain, and there's quite a quite a bit of surge pushing into the rocks. The currents get really wild, and uh, you always have to be on the lookout for other predators that could be in the area: sharks, scorpion fish, and things like that. We were side scanning, a big bull shark come by. So there are bull sharks out here. It looked like 20 to me, but it's probably about 12. They don't get 12 foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sure looked like a 20 footer to me. <laughs> Cork's the expedition leader, but as far as on the vessel goes, uh, I'm the captain. Sea captain for about three decades, retired Navy guy for two decades, diver for like four decades. <laughs> I met Cappy in Ecuador. He was up north treasure hunting and ended up uh, doing a bunch of work on his boat. We became pretty good friends. I love being an adventurer. It's in your blood. It's in my blood, certainly. I got a research vessel in North Peru. We locate these shipwrecks, bring them to the surface so they can be studied. Galan, Peru. This is where I live. There's a remarkable amount of history here in this area. It's the first Spanish settlement in 1532, which began the onset of the Spanish coming down through Peru and conquering the Inca Indians. So we're getting ready to paint the boat. As you can see, it probably needs a pretty good paint job. What a perfect way to end the day. This will be my last sunset until I return from Brazil. We're headed to the most dangerous island in the world. I hope I can cheat death one more time. Aside from natural hazards, there are other threats that come with diving a potential valuable shipwreck. Modern-day piracy is a very real danger in this part of South America. 
in our area, just traveling down by boat anywhere, there's pirates all over the place. There's been four cases of piracy in Fort Alesa, which is just south of here, and one person was actually shot. They'd come on board, they'd either, you know, tie them up, uh, you know, take the engine, just leave them floating out there, or they'd actually kill them, throw them in the water, and just take everything. You never see the Coast Guard either, man. Yeah, they're, they're never around. You're definitely on your own. Anything with an engine uh, certainly concerns me. It could run up on us really quick. If you don't have a weapon on board, which we don't because of the laws of Brazil, then uh, you have to come up with whatever way you can to defend yourself. We try to improvise. We've got spear guns, flares, and we've got poles that we can throw at them, you know? So, I mean, just Camp about it. gas. Yeah, gas, we can throw gas at them. You know, Molotov cocktails, we can make that stuff. But yeah, it'd be nice to have, uh, have weapons where you could fend them off. Yeah, you don't want to get a weapon, though. That would put you in prison probably 10 or 15 years. Yeah, pretty much. The only people that have weapons here are the criminals. You got to fly by the seat of your pants and, and pull up all the guts you got inside you and, and face it. We're on high alert, you know? Ship's mate Hinato Spiritus is tasked with keeping an eye out for approaching vessels. That's how we spot those pirates before they get here, you know? As Megan and Brian get set to dive the wreck site. Let's splash, y'all. Let's do it. The sea holds so many secrets. And what's really fascinating about shipwrecks is that they're a time capsule. And it's just really captured my imagination since when I was a little girl. The visibility is terrible. At this point, it's pretty murky down there. It, you know, leaves a lot to be desired. Twenty minutes into their dive, Megan and Brian have yet to spot anything of significance. And then we find, you know, a pretty good sized piece of wood. So we're we're trying to figure out what it is. Once we get close enough, this giant object just materializes. At first, we're not really finding much of anything. Then something catches my eye. giant anchor just materializes. It was a sight to behold. It really was beautiful laying there in the sand. What'd you see? 
We've got a beautiful galleon anchor down there. No Let's way. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Um, we had a good image on the yeah. side scan, but you couldn't tell how big is it. It's big. It's huge. <laughs> I mean, Holy it's like... smokes, man. Is it just laying on the bottom, or is it kind of like encrusted? Or... It's got a lot of growth on it. Yeah. There's a chain in two different locations. Nice. Excellent. Oh, you. you were looking for an indicator? This is it, you guys. This is our wreck. Woohoo! Nice. Good it. job. Good job. Yeah, get your stuff on. Let's start gridding this sucker out. Right on. Let's get in the water. OK, it, rock man. and roll, man. Rock and roll. Totally spectacular. This literally took my breath away. Right. Well, first dive, that was good. I have never come across something like this. And I'm excited to go back underwater and see what else is down there. When we get down there with the dredge, we'll see what we can turn up. A find like this makes the potential dangers that could lie ahead totally worth the risk. The anchor is a crucial find because it proves the team has honed in on a shipwreck near Snake Island. But its massive size makes it nearly impossible to retrieve for evaluation. Now, the team will use the dredge pump and metal detectors to comb the site for smaller artifacts that could more easily be authenticated. In this area, with the currents that we have, a wreck like this could be spread for miles. I kept getting hits with the detector. Let's triangulate it and uh, run the dredge over there. Got it. Go slow, go slow, go slow. If you don't go slow, you're going to spill it. <sighs> Work through it. Let's do it. <laughs> Here's some wood. Anything that doesn't look like a shell, save it. Okay. Hey, got the key. Hey, what's going on, buddy? I think there is something there. Is it moving? Coming right at us. It's a boat. Where? Right there. Let me take a look. How many of them, Cap? Three. I can see guns. Pirates? They don't yeah. mess around. Court! Oh my god, they got guns. Oh I'm going. Go, 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 go. Get down, get down. 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 Get down